bad, mother. Could have done. Hi, this is Trey Passer, and this is going to be my review or overview of uh, the Bates Motel t television series that was on A and E on Monday nights uh, at ten o'clock. Uh, this is a, I guess, a prequel to the movie Psycho, which was based on a novel, Psycho. And uh, this is basically about Norman and his relationship with his mother, of course, Norma Bates. And um, I'll tell you who's in the cast, and I'll tell you uh, a little bit of basically the highlights of uh, the season. I think that would be a good way to go. Okay, so I don't, you know, bore you with the details of too much uh, stuff. Okay, the first, uh, I think, uh, Vera Faminga, she plays Norma Bates. Then you have Freddie Highmore, who plays Norman Bates. You have Max Theroux, who plays Dylan Massett, who's the older son of Norma Bates. And then you have Olivia Cook as Emma, a friend of Norman, who has cystic fibrosis, and she really likes Norman. She has basically a crush on Norman. Norman doesn't feel exactly the same way about her. He just sees her as a friend. Then you have Nicola Peltz as Bradley, dead girl walking Martin, as I like to refer to her. She's the local hottie, of course, that Norman's, of course, crazy in love with. Okay, then you have a couple of sort of, you know, characters in the town. You have uh, Nestor Carbonell as uh, Sheriff Alex Marrera, or as I like to call him, eyeliner guy. And then you have Mike Vogel. As Detective Zach, detect, excuse me, Deputy Zach Shelby. Okay, then you have Keegan Connor Tracy as Miss Watson, one of Norman's teachers, or who I like to refer to as hot, inappropriate teacher. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, W. Earl Brown as uh, Keith Summers. Then you have uh, Jer Burns as uh, Jake Abernathy, or as I like to refer to him as a uh, creepy glasses guy. Okay, and the basic premise of this is um, after the, upon the death of uh, Norman's father, uh, Norman and his mother Norma decide to move to this small town in uh, I think it's near Oregon, and um, they buy a rundown motel. Okay, and. They buy it from the bank, you know, the rundown motel in the house, in the land that it's on, and, you know, to start fresh, start, start anew, of course. But the former owner, Keith Summers, who I like to refer to lovingly as a fat bastard, uh, he basically comes by the house and threatens her, you know, saying, you know, this was his house and it was in his family for all these years. And she basically blows him off, said, you know, too bad, I bought it. It's in the mine, off my property. Okay, later, uh... Norman meets Bradley, the local hottie, who on his way to school, and she basically befriends him and flirts with him like crazy. Okay, so of course he's instantly smitten, okay? And then later, uh, when Norman's supposed to be, you know, he asked, I think he asked permission to go to a, a party that he's been invited to by Bradley, but Norman tells him he can't go. She needs him around the house to help. So he storms to his room and then he sneaks out. And then during that period, a uh, uh, creepy fat bastard comes back and basically attacks Norma and basically he rapes her. And of course, Norma comes back just in time after the rape and knocks him out, you know, knocks him out cold. Okay, and then Norma tells him to go get some rope. And he comes back. When Norman's gone, uh, Keith Summers, or fat bastard, wakes up and basically threatens her again and tell her he's having trouble breathing, and she decides to take a knife and give him some air, and she proceeds to plunge 17 holes in him, giving him enough air, and of course killing him at the same time. And of course, they decide to dump the body in the harbor, and in the meantime, Norman finds in the, one of the hotel rooms a sketchbook full of drawings showing women being tortured, and then later they show a woman being chained and drugged up somewhere in an unknown location, of course, and then later uh, you find out uh, Norma's older son Dylan uh, tracks them down. Okay, of course Norma didn't tell him when he, she moved with Norman, and he shows up. 
And he basically blackmails Norma into letting him stay, and he actually calls her Norma. He doesn't call her mother <laughs> or anything. So, uh, uh, and basically, uh, and this time Norma meets Stephanie Shelby, who basically tells her this town is uh, the way this town, the con local economy of this town is basically, you know, is not any up and up. It's basically through illegal means, uh, basically through uh, marijuana. <laughs> okay, and later, like I said, Norma meets Emma, sweet Emma, who meets him in school. And of course, she, she has cystic fibrosis and she walks around with an oxygen tank and, you know, an oxygen thing in her nose. And she's a real outgoing type of girl, you know. And of course, she's instantly, instantly smitten with Norman, but he only has eyes for hot girl Bradley. Okay. And one day when Norman is walking to school with Bradley and her friends, they see a, a car accident and it's her father, Bradley's father. He's been badly burned. Okay. And so they take him to the hospital. Okay, and then later, Norman, Norma, as she's driving through town, she sees a guy hanging up in the middle of the town square, basically on fire. And then later they find out, of course, this is the way justice is done in this town. Okay, whoever this Bernie gentleman was, he was the one that apparently attacked Bradley's father. So that's the town's way of dealing with that. Okay, now also uh, during this time, the sheriff is awfully suspicious of Norma because Keith Summers, the late owner, his truck has been found close to the hotel. And of course, he gets a warrant and searches the house, but he doesn't find anything. And then, of course, later, uh, Deputy Shelby tells Norma that, listen, I found the belt, and I'll, I'm doing this to protect you, and I'm here to take care of you. And of course, that immediately turns Norma on, and they <laughs> decide to make out <laughs> and proceed to, you know, do to do. Okay. In the meantime, Norman, while lying on his bed, he gets the first of what I call the inside Norma voice, talking to him, persuading that he has to go with that belt that uh, Deputy Shelby has in his house. That's the only way to clear, to clear Norma, or clear me, as inside Norma tells Norman. Okay, so he gets up in a fog and walks to Deputy Shelby's house and finds the belt, you know, Okay, well, actually, he doesn't find the belt. He actually finds a uh, locked up girl that's been depicted in that book that he found, in the mysterious sketchbook he found, in one of the hotel rooms. He finds, actually, finds a, a Chinese girl tied up or chained up, of course. And then, of course, who is that exactly comes home at this time? Of course, Deputy Shelby. Okay, and, and also, uh, at this point, Dylan has tracked Norman to, uh, to Deputy Shelby's house. And seeing Norman trying to get away, he distracts Dep Deputy Shelby by ringing the bell, allowing him to escape. Okay, and uh, later, uh, of course, Norman tells the story to his mother, and she doesn't believe him. Okay, so she thinks he's making it up because he he doesn't like uh, Deputy Shelby. Well, of course, now in the meantime, Bradley, hot girl Bradley, or Bradley, dead girl walking Bradley, as I like to refer to her, uh, her father dies from his burns in the fire. Okay, and of course. She's totally devastated, and Norman wants to be there for her, of course, and they wind up sleeping together, of course. You know, when uh, Norman finds out about it, she's quite upset about it, okay, because Norman's her boy, and he doesn't want, she doesn't want any of these evil girls to taint her, taint him. Okay, and also at this time, uh, uh, Norman is arrested <laughs> uh, for someone's murder, okay, uh, by the sheriff, and Later, she gets bailed out, you know, by Norman. And Dylan wants to take Norman away and live with him because he thinks his mother, Norma, is batshit crazy and she's corrupting Norman. And then later, she finds out uh, when Norman tells him that, listen, Norman was the one that killed his father. Okay, his father was attacking me and Norman blanked out, killed his father, and doesn't remember it. Okay. Of course, so... They tell him, listen, we have to protect Norman, okay? Okay, and later, Dylan and Norman uh, uh, go to Summer's house and they find the belt, you know, and they throw it into, the, you know, the Keith Summer's belt and they throw it into the harbor. And then Shelby, Deputy Shelby comes by the hotel and he finds the girl that was, was, was in his basement who Norman 
earlier rescued him and Emma rescued. He finds her in a hotel and chases her, of course, with a gun trying to kill her, but she gets away. And of course, at this point, he knows that Norma, Norman and Dylan know, so he basically holds him hostage and he's going to kill him. But of course, Dylan has a shootout with him and Dylan winds up killing Deputy Shelby, thereby, you know, you know, you know, saving the family. Okay, so later, Deputy, you know, they call the sheriff and the sheriff arrives, but he makes up a story. Sheriff Romano, or the Ireland guy, as I like to refer to him, makes up a story and says that uh, Deputy Shelby, he killed him in a gunfight. And of course, the family is stunned, but they accept it because that means it's over. Of course, at this point also, you have you get introduced to Jake Abernathy, or as I, I like to refer to him as Creepy Eyeglasses Guy. Okay, he uh, basically comes to the hotel and says, listen, I reserve room nine for like a week every two months when Keith Summers hold the hotel. So he agrees to do that again. He wants to do that again with Norma. And of course, she, she's happy to get the business, so she doesn't mind letting him stay, even though he's Creepy Eyeglasses Guy. And then later... When Norman goes to see Bradley, because, of course, after they slept together, he thinks we're boyfriend and girlfriend, and he has all these big plans in his head of them going out and everything. She tells him, basically, that they're not meant for each other, that sleeping with him was a mistake. And, of course, then Norman freaks out and turns around and t basically tells her that she's not a nice girl, and then he starts walking up the road. And then the inside Norma voice starts talking. He starts talking out loud. Basically, he's saying that she's not a nice girl, and she doesn't deserve him. And at this point, Shelby follows him up the road, and I thought for sure in this episode, Norman was going to kill Bradley, and she was going to be Bradley Dead Girl official, officially instead of Bradley Dead Girl walking. But at the last minute, she hugs him, and I think that snaps Norman out of his psycho mode, and he doesn't kill her. Okay, and then later you find out uh, Emma, sweet Emma, her father is a taxidermist, so uh, he teaches Norman the craft, and later Norman, who, who's uh, been feeding a dog, uh, his dog gets run over, of course, and that was just before, just after Bradley uh, basically broke his heart, okay, and he decides to stuff his dog and leave it in his room, okay, now, also, Norman's acting weird in school, so his principal and hot, inappropriate teacher, and when I say hot, inappropriate teacher, this is what I mean. Yes, she's really hot, and she's really inappropriate because, well, she seems to take a particular interest in Norman, okay? She, uh, she's always touching him and always <laughs> up close with him and, and hugging him and and you just either can just tell she's like way too concerned with with Norman. Uh, she's way too focused on him. And anyway, uh, her and the principal decides that you know they call Norman in and say, "Listen, he's maybe he should see a psychologist because of his behavior." And she agrees to take him. And while she's there, while he's there with her and the psychologist, Norma does all the talking. She doesn't even let Norman basically open his mouth. Okay, and of course the psychologist thinks Norma needs therapy, of course, but she immediately blows off and grabs Norma and leaves. Okay. Okay, now at this point Dylan is working uh, for the marijuana growers. He's basically guarding the marijuana. Okay, and uh, uh, creepy glasses guy, uh, um, Norma lady finds out that he was working with Keith Summers and Deputy Shelby, so she kicks him out of the creepy glasses guy out of the hotel, okay, and, you know, she's getting ready to go out to dinner with Dylan, and later she finds dead Deputy Sheriff Shelby in her bed, of course, which immediately, you know, she immediately lets everybody in town know by screaming her, her head off, okay, and then next episode, uh, you know, she tells him that Sheriff Romano, or eyeliner guy, as I like to refer to him, that she thinks, you know, creepy eye glasses guy put Shelby's corpse in her bed, of course, and the sheriff tells her, let me handle this, I will handle this, I will take care of this. But of course, Norma's freaked out about it, okay, and then later, you see in the episode, uh, Creepy Eyeglasses Guy confronts Norma in her car and tells him basically that 
Keith Summers owed him, uh, and Shelby owed him 150000 and she wa he wants it by midnight. Well, he's going to kill her. He's going to kill her two sons first, and then he's going to kill her. Okay, and she agrees, of course, to meet him at midnight. And then she tells the sheriff, and the sheriff says, he will take care of it, okay? Okay, and then also in this episode, uh, Emma uses reverse psychology and asks Norman to the dance, okay, as, to go just as friends, okay, even though she knows that Norman's still pining over Bradley. And they decide to go, okay, and while at the dance, Norman's still staring at, at, um, at Bradley, you know, t to the point where Emma just gets frustrated and leaves him high and dry. And, of course, Bradley's boyfriend's there, and he notices this also. And he decides to take, ask Norman to step outside to discuss the rates in his hotel. And, of course, you know, when Norman tells him what the rates are, and they're a tad too high, he decides to punch Norman in the nose. Okay, and then he tells Norman, that's for having too high rates in your hotel, and also, stay away from my girlfriend. And then he walks out, and he walks back into the, into the dance. Norman gets up, brushes himself off, and decides to walk home in the rain. Okay, and just when Norman thinks he's sunk his lowest, who showed up? Hot, inappropriate teacher. Bow, chicka, bow, wow. Okay, and then she decides to you know, invite him home and clean him up because she sees the bloody nose. And of course, she's getting way too close while she's cleaning, cleaning him up. And she tells him, listen, I'll drive you home, Norman, but let me change it to something a little bit more comfortable. Bow, check a bow, wow. And then she uh, goes out, leaves the door open so he can see her changing. And of course, at this point, inside Norma, her voice comes again. And tells him that she's basically the teacher is trying to seduce you, Norman. You have to do what you have to do. Okay, and then they later switch to the scene where you see Norma agreeing to meet, you know, she's gonna meet creepy eyeglasses guy to give him the money that she doesn't hundred and fifty thousand that she doesn't have. And of course at this point she has a gun that Dylan gave to her and she's she's tra trained a little bit on it somewhat. And just when she's getting ready to meet him, who shows up? Eyeliner sheriff guy. And he uh, meets creepy eyeglasses guy and decides to uh, tell him, listen, the old deal that you got, this is my town, so I'm going to get 50%. Okay, and uh, creepy eyeglasses guy says that's a little bit too high. And, of course, uh, Ireland Sheriff guy decides to settle the argument by pumping four bullets into him. Okay, thereby ending that threat. And then Ireland Sheriff guy tells Norma, you can get up now and go home. Okay. Somehow he knew the crazy was behind him, so he tells her to get up and go home. Okay? And that ends that threat. Okay, and then later you see Norman comes coming home to reunite with his mother, Norma. And then you later see a flash, you, you see a, they switch to the hot, inappropriate teacher's house. And then you see her lying on the floor. And instead of uh, being the hot, inappropriate teacher, she's now she's dead, hot, inappropriate teacher. With a... You see her throat is cut, and you also see her with a necklace on that has a B symbol on it. And later, earlier, about two episodes back, uh, Bradley found in her father, her dead father's office, love letters from a mysterious B. Okay, so at this point, you don't know who killed hot, inappropriate teacher. Was it Norman who did it and blanked out? Was it Bradley to get you know getting revenge for her, her father? Or her mother, or was it her mother who did it, or was there somebody else? Because earlier in the episode, you saw a hot, inappropriate teacher arguing with somebody, telling them to leave her alone. So you don't know. So I guess that'll be the mystery for the second season. And I really, really like the show. It's just, like I guess, it has a sort of a Twin Peaks type of feel to it, and it's just has all kinds of crazy characters in it. And believe it or not, Norman and <laughs> Norman and his mother are just one of the weird characters that live in the town, and it's just. A great show to watch. Always entertaining to me. And I can't wait for the second season, which is not going to begin until 2014. Okay, and I'm so looking forward to this. And I'm definitely going to get this series on Blu-ray and DVD. I absolutely love this. Love the performances. I think uh, uh, Vera Flamingo, who plays Norma Bates, she's probably going to win an Emmy. Because she, she is so good as Norma Bates. Uh, and Freddie Highmore is just as good as Norman Bates, I think. And Max Terrell, 
at first I didn't like the character of introducing another character, another you know a brother uh, for Norman Bates, but he, but it actually works on that show, and I actually like Olivia Cook as Emma, the friend of Norman who has the cystic fibrosis and walks around with her oxygen tent, and she's a real sweetheart. I love her, and I, I like creepy. Uh, the only person that I'm sad that is dead is hot inappropriate teacher. She was really hot, <laughs> and now she's dead hot inappropriate teacher. So we won't be seeing her unless they show flashbacks or something. But I'm sad to see her go because I, 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 I could have bet even money that that she's gonna make a move on Norman. It was just a matter of time with her touching and inappropriate hugs and everything else. But it is what it is. Okay, let me know what you think about the show. If you watched it, feel free to leave comments down below. And this is Trey Passer saying so long and take care.